This week on Power and Politics. Today, we face a choice between two very different visions for our nation. Harris in, Biden out. Democrats unite behind the vice president to lead their ticket after President Biden bows out. So what's next in the process? One of New York's delegates to the Democratic National Convention, Dwayne Gregory, joins us today to break it down. Plus, exciting changes in Islip, especially at the town's airport. Supervisor Angie Carpenter joins us with more on how the deal to bring JetBlue to Long Island came together. And the public debate over a plan to bring a casino to Nassau rages on. Power and Politics begins right now. And welcome to Power and Politics. I'm Rich Baravi. We know it's been a whirlwind few weeks in the political world, to say the least. But all eyes now are on Vice President Kamala Harris following President Joe Biden's decision to end his bid for re-election. Biden endorsed Harris for the Democratic presidential nomination and says he'll join her on the campaign trail. Michelle and I couldn't be prouder to endorse you and to do everything we can to get you through this election and into the Oval Office. And former President Barack Obama also endorsing Harris's campaign. The vice president has already secured the number of delegates needed to become the Democratic nominee. She recently released her first campaign video. She says the focus is about choosing freedom. We believe in the promise of America and we're ready to fight for it. Because when we fight, we win. So join us. She also highlighted controversial issues, including her stance on reproductive rights and gun violence prevention. Vice President has received lots of support from our nation's leaders, as well as Democrats here on Long Island, one of them being Nassau Legislative Minority Leader and another DNC delegate, Delia Dirigi Witten. She just seems to be going full force already, and she, has, she knows what the job entails. She knows so many of the different connections already with the different governments, the different... Uh, countries you know she's already in my opinion 10 steps ahead of anyone else and harris also has the support of former nassau legislator kavan abrahams he's another delegate who'll take part of the dnc it's evident that our country needs true leadership more now than ever and we look forward and i look forward to supporting her candidacy Harris set a presidential fundraising record, raising more than $81 million in just 24 hours. The DNC is set to hold a virtual vote to officially nominate Harris. She and her eventual running mate will formally accept the nomination at the Democratic National Convention in Chicago, which begins August 19th. Meanwhile, Republicans are hammering away at the Democrats' swap at the top of their ticket, and they're going after Vice President Harris's record. Nassau County Executive Bruce Blakeman says Harris should be rejected by voters if she is, in fact, the nominee. And in a Truth Social post, former President Trump expressed his frustration with the process, saying in part, quote, The Democrats pick a candidate, crooked Joe Biden. He loses the debate badly, then panics and makes mistake after mistake, is told he can't win, and decide they'll pick another candidate. Probably Harris. This was before Harris clearly solidified support. Former president finished up by saying that Harris and the Democrats are a threat to democracy. An official with the Trump campaign also filed a complaint with the Federal Election Commission against Biden's campaign money being transferred to Harris. They say if the $91 million is given to her, it would be a violation of the Federal Election Campaign Act of 1971, which regulates election funding and spending, although many Federal election experts are disputing that, considering that Harris's name was also on that fundraising account. Joining us now to break it all down, as if that wasn't enough to break down, <laughs> Babylon Town Councilman Dwayne Gregory, another delegate to the DNC. You'll be in Chicago for the convention. What a whirlwind. Yes, What's it been like from your perspective? It's, it's been amazing. You know, um, certainly there was a lot of uncertainty. Um, what's going to happen since the debate? And as you laid out, well, the you know, President Biden decided to, to not run for re-election and support uh, Vice President Kamala Harris. And there's been an ejection of energy unseen, unlike many years. People are comparing it to possibly 2008 with Obama. So it's, it's exciting. To see the process play out the way it did, where the president sends a tweet out on a Sunday afternoon saying, I'm not in, after there had been so much support, so much pressure on him to back out of the race. A day later, not only has Harris declared she's in, but it seems the entire Democratic establishment backs her immediately. Right. What do you make of that? 
Well, I think it was important, and she came she came out um, early and said she's welcomes the open process and earning the votes of the of the people. And quickly, the people who were mentioned as potential opponents got you know got behind her and support her campaign and and uh, really solidified her ascendancy to to the nomination. And uh, as you stated. Eighty-one million dollars in twenty-four hours. I mean, that's just truly an amazing groundswell of support for her. So, when you see those kind of numbers and the energy the Democratic Party's had in the last week is undeniable. Do you think it's almost due to the fact that many Democrats were resigned to defeat if Biden had stayed in the race? I think. I think certainly there was a, a lack of enthusiasm. Um, yet, you know, I think one people weren't all that excited to see a Trump Biden rematch. Some may have been concerned about, you know, can Biden really pull it off again? Is he the same person he was in 2020? Can he give that enthusiasm and energy that he gave before? Um, and I think people kind of were just kind of resigned to participate and we're going to sit on the sidelines. But now they're really energetic. And this is something that's giving a lot of people hope and uh, energy and optimism um, and something to look forward to. Senator Chuck Schumer said this week that this was a grassroots effort from the ground up to support Harris. But if you look at the process, there was a whole primary season. Democrats went through the primary. Joe Biden overwhelmingly won those primaries. And yet in the span of a couple of days, Democratic leaders exerted enough pressure to convince the president to drop out. And then they all immediately backed Harris. What message does that send to voters, especially the 12 million or so who voted for Joe Biden in the primaries? Yeah, no, I, I, I understand the question or understand the concern. Um, but, you know, the, 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 the primary process is not finalized into the convention. Um, so anything can happen. Um, and unfortunately, in this situation, there were some concerns that were raised by, 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 you know, many members of Congress. I think we, before things ended, it were like 30 members of, of the House of Representatives that had come out and expressed concerns. There were rumors of, of more people that were willing to, to step forward and, and, and uh, voice their concerns. So part of being a candidate is really, in pres especially when you're a presidential candidate and you have the House um, you know, poised to, to take, or take control, um, you have to say, okay, what's in the best interest of not only my campaign as a presidential candidate, but the overall um, ticket? And the bottom of the ticket was, you know, expressing concerns that they were going to actually lose seats as opposed to winning seats. So I think uh, President Biden took the time to reflect with his family and made the proper decision. For you personally, you're one of the delegates. You go into this yeah. election cycle assuming that you're going to be able to cast your vote for President Biden yeah. and everything changes. There was so much uncertainty. What's this been like for you going through the process? Yeah, you know, I've been involved in Long Island politics for 32 years, 33 years now. My first time ever going to a convention. I, I didn't anticipate this type of <laughs> excitement, right. if you will, or, or um, kind of confusion, I guess, uh, you know, one way to put it. But um, yeah, it's 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 on some level I'm really sad to see you know what what President Biden had to go through. Um, it would have been nice that maybe they kind of would have not been so public about it. Um, give him the respect that I think that he's due for his decades of experience and sacrifice for this country. Uh, but we are where we are. Um, you know, he made his address to the nation and expressed what his focus is and what he's going to be doing. And I respect him for it. And, um, you know, I think it's now it's time for us to move forward as a party and, and, and focus on not only winning the, the presidential election, but winning the House and maintaining the, the Senate. All right, so what happens next now? There's a roll call vote. Is that what's going to take place? Yes, yeah, so now the, the, the party is meeting. I think there was a rules committee yesterday. Um, they're outlining what, what the procedure is going to be, but there's anticipated there will be a roll call uh, early October, early August, excuse me, uh, I believe August 1st is a tentative date, and we'll do a virtual roll call to uh, formally um, adopt the Harris whoever ticket. Uh, for the party. So at the end of the day, after all of this, the convention may very well look like any other ordinary convention in modern political times with the party backing the one singular candidate. Isn't yeah. that right? Yeah, yeah. It's going to be it's going to be a celebration. Um, anything can happen. 
Uh, we're we're go also going through the process of, as delegates, I'm a pledge delegate for Biden, switching that pledge from Biden to Harris. I sent in my petition yesterday. Uh, so I imagine delegates across the country are doing that. So, you know, it, it's a process, but uh, I anticipate that um, Vice President Harris will be the nominee without any um, hiccups, if you will. Well, you have a hand in history here. We're all witnesses to history. Who knows what happens next? But uh, we're appreciative of you coming in and explaining how this will move forward for the Democrats. Thanks so much. Great, thank you. Dwayne Gregory, we appreciate it. And still to come on Power and Politics is something Long Islanders have been asking for for decades. And now some big service changes are finally underway at MacArthur Airport. Of course, we're talking about JetBlue. Islip Town Supervisor Angie Carpenter joins me next to break down everything in the works. Stay with us.